Okay, friends, it is going to be a hot and sweaty Saturday, but let me tell you, we are getting stuff done. It's also Gabriel's birthday weekend. As you can tell, I got a big old pile of Lowe's and Walmart behind me. They, they exploded yesterday. I've got some organizing stuff for the girls' room and for stuff that's gonna go under my bed. But I don't even think we're getting into all of that today, honestly, because there's so much going on outside. You shall see, Mr. Travis has rented a stub grinder. I am going to get the concrete painted that's like going around our house gonna get my flower boxes up door trim I believe exterior door trim is going down got some new hummingbird feeders a lot so let's get outside and get to work I'll show you some of my little Aldi finds this past week I got Daniel and Benjamin their own little picnic table with an umbrella and then I got another umbrella for their like we call it the trampoline picnic table are you guys loving your new picnic table I just thought I saw it and it was so cute. Of course, you know, Benjamin's the size of a five-year-old. <laughs> Benjamin, are you almost two, man? Yeah. And then this is the other umbrella that I got. This is a picnic table, it's a big one. And I got it used from a friend who was moving. Hey, Marcy, if you're watching my videos, picnic table's getting lots of love. It could use another coat of stain, but yeah, this is, and you see the trampoline starting to sag a little bit there, but we've had this trampoline for a whole year, and that's pretty good for as many kids as we have jumping on it. What, honey? It didn't blow away. What happened to our last one? It blew away. It blew away, yeah. So this is our second trampoline, so it's living here. Other updates that are happening. Hey, Daniel, what are we going to put up this summer? in our yard. Finally, look at mama. We've got to do some work to get it ready though. Last time we did this, you were in my tummy. It was at the old house and we worked real hard one summer and we put this big thing up full of water. Pool. A pool, do you remember having a pool? Uh -huh. A little bit? Yeah. You don't know Benjamin, all you know is the lake. You yeah. will be happy to get a pool. Woohoo! No pool installation today, although Travis and I were gonna walk around out back here and uh, decide where we're gonna put it. But he has his scoop type thing. I call it a bulldozer and I know it's not. Anyway, he can get the ground ready. It'll be different than last time without having a tool. Are you gonna slide? Let me see ya. You doing it? You're almost too big for the playground. Come on, let me see you slide. Let me see you slide, Mr. Blue. You are in all blue today. You can do it. Come on, come on. No. no, well, sometimes he, okay. Okay, little grump already. And here's your little Saturday morning. Look at all the chickens. I'll stop with the Aldi finds in a minute, but of course I couldn't resist a giant sunflower spinner. Yes, yay Aldi. Hey good girl. Feathers. She is, it's so beautiful. And you can see up close, you can start to see where they're getting their little combs. Yeah, mm -hmm. good deal. So this is my hummingbird nectar that I got at Tractor Supply last night. And my new um, hummingbird feeder. We're gonna take these to the front porch. So much noise, woo, woo. This is the brand and the hummingbird feeder that I got. It also says it is bee and bird resistant, so it would be nice if just our little hummingbird friends could eat from this. And this is my other one. It's dusty and neglected. Hasn't been filled since last year. So I'm going to get this one going now. Small things, but definitely goes on the list of makes mama's heart happy things. I was asked for lunch a few times, even though we just finished breakfast. I got it done nonetheless. I'm trying to decide now, painting is gonna be a messy project. That's why I'm wearing like an old shirt inside out. Um, there's painting and there's the flower boxes. 
There's also painting the door trim. The painting I'm referring to is the um, cinder block around the house. I think I'll walk around and look at that and uh, just see which direction I want to dive first. It's not even noon yet, we're doing well. So up there, of course, gardens are raging, but this is the concrete, I'm sorry, I keep saying cinder block. It's cinder block with concrete over it. You, you know what it is. Uh, that's what I want to get painted. And of course, I'm just gonna have to push ivy and such back. Probably the wrong time of year to paint, but you know what? I get stuff done when I'm able. That's how things get done. It may be wrong time of year, but it happens. Okay, and then here, and then up here. I'm just so happy though to have things like electrical outlets outside. But yeah, you see, it's because underneath is the crawl space. So it just it just needs to be painted. And then back around here, if we can find our way through. Um, yeah, I need to get that painted. Hello, oh my, all kinds of mosquitoes. Woo! I power washed the whole house last weekend. I could not get the hose to reach on this side. So I won't tell if you won't. Anyway, more that's gonna be painted. I'm gonna get that painted. When I power wash last weekend, hopefully you can hear me over the bulldozer, there's a mama bird and her babes up there. So I left that little part out. But yeah, so we're gonna paint along the bottom there. There's Mr. Travis rolling some dirt. Woo, dumping some dirt, action. Dump in action. His hopes and dreams is to get this all cleared for a nice backyard. This was all forest, but don't worry, there's still acres upon acres of forest. I'm thinking this area will be the pool area, but Travis may want to have some more trees cut down before. I don't know, he will let us know. I think what we're gonna do is at our last house, we had the 18 foot in diameter pool that we had put up and we used it for about two summers and then we moved. So this is our third summer here, time to get a pool going. And I think we're gonna order, Walmart has in stock now the 22 foot pools, but I think we're gonna do the 26 foot and then hopefully get three to four good summers out of it. And then our goal would be obviously by the time we've got every penny out of that pool, have enough saved so we're that then we can do an in-ground pool and uh, do all the fun in-ground pool stuff but this would be our pool area I got these deck boxes at Aldi they are clearly made for decks they have the deck brackets this is what they're made for I got the bright idea that I could use them as window boxes and just now when Travis and I were looking at it, he was like, well, you know, if I hang that under the kitchen window, we have plumbing there. We run the risk of this like less than $20 thing causing havoc. And so in my heart, I want window boxes. I don't know. Some of you ladies out there probably in your heart want window boxes, but if I want window boxes, I think we're gonna have to plan and I'm gonna have to order them. And Travis will have to take some time to figure out you know, where the studs are and where to really put the screws through and all of that. It's a little more involved than my less than $20 Aldi deck boxes. So I got all these beautiful plants last night at Lowe's thinking all my window flower box thoughts. I got the sweet potato vine and oh, just some gorgeous things. But I think they're gonna have to be deck baskets. And my aunt has a lake house and she has beautiful deck baskets. So. I am fine with deck baskets. It's just, again, I wanted window boxes. So we are now going to do these deck baskets and like it. So here's the first one. We have all our different plants in here. Gonna chop up a watermelon if you can hear me.
Watermelon has been dispensed. We saw a fantastic black snake going under our uh, stairs and into our gardens. Had a nice long talk about how good black snakes are, how they're not venomous. I'm gonna work on painting, gonna not stab myself in the eye with this. And then I'm gonna paint the door trims white. Actually, my little kitchen door. Yeah, I'm gonna not do the kitchen door today, but I'm gonna do the French doors around our back deck, and I'm gonna do the front door, get that trim done. Swear everybody off from, of course, walking in and out that door today. And then we'll work on this house concrete. Oh, and this dirty, dirty boy, you found something. Oh, he's huge, Liam. He looks like he's got little alien eyes. Look at him. Yeah, no, he's just, yeah, he's just, um. Liam, he is really cool. Can I hold him for a minute? He is so cool and special. So you found him under the dirt like this? Uh-huh, at first I saw the snake, but then I saw the little one. Gotcha, he's really cool. Okay, well he can visit, and then later you gotta let him go, so he can go back to his mommy, as I always say. We stop this door trim painting time. Naomi caught a lizard, a racing lizard. She's caught it, racing striped lizard. Okay, so here's the little gem that Naomi caught. He is so cool. Now this is the kind, Naomi, I'm pretty sure they, speed. they, they drop their tails too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he's young and that's why he didn't. I grabbed him a different way, so I just grabbed like, sure, his whole body. But I didn't just grab his tail. We have lizards here that drop their tails. I think this might be one. Cool, okay. good find. Got that back trim painted. Now, got enough paint left Got this old white wicker chair that I found in the trash of all places right after we moved here. It was just special, significant for me because it, it was a blessing. I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. I will take that white wicker chair out of the trash. Give it a good home. I'm not doing anything special to this chair. I mean, the paint is already chipping off of it. Who knows the life it lived before it's been on my porch for the last three years. So I'm gonna just use this exterior white paint, get it a fresh coat of paint, help it last a little longer. Got that chair painted, and now a storm is rolling in, and the power just went off in the house. So it's kind of coming over our mountain into our area, and storming pretty bad other places in the valley today. So yeah, but it looks, I just looked at my weather app, it may kind of hit us for a bit and then stop, hoping I can still get around that concrete. The power's out. I know, the power is out. All the clouds are rolling. Work is still going on though, because it's nice and cool. Okay, so our little real life reality update is storm kept a blowing by and the power. I looked at the house once, yeah. remember thinking, house looks dark, power went out. It's probably been out for about 30 minutes or so. We've already called it in. Not a big earth shattering thing. When our power goes out, the longest it's ever been out here at this house has been about four hours. So we're just kind of in limbo because now it's sprinkling. Travis and Zion are still doing some stuff outside. Me and the other kids are inside picking up and uh, we'll just see. I'm kind of thinking, well, I mean, everyone that's sweaty and dirty. Gabriel was, you were loading the dishwasher when the power went out. I got, I got a shower sample. He got a shower first. Everyone, everyone else, you know what we've been doing all day. So we might use some baby wipes and wipe off our hands and go over the mountain and go to Sheets and get hot dogs or something and hope that the power is back on when we get home. Hit my messy office, power is back on. Never got to paint the concrete around the house. Tomorrow is church and picnic. Next thing you shall see is me getting that painting done. Then I think we're gonna have a country porch chat at the end of this video, and I'm gonna talk about whether we're moving to Texas or not. We made it through that storm, made it through the power outage. As my videos tend to go, several days have gone by, and I got all the concrete around the house painted. I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to also show you those deck boxes are hung. And then we're going to talk about Texas. Yeehaw. So I thought we would hang these on the inside of the deck, but Travis hung them facing out and they turned out really pretty. I like them a lot. And then also I picked up a flat of marigolds because I wanted to add some more pops of color around. So I'm going to add marigolds to these deck boxes. If you remember way back, you can watch some of my earlier videos from when we first moved in here. This was just all like dense forest. Couldn't play, just lots of weeds and such. So what Travis has been doing here is having trees cut down and grinding stumps as you saw this weekend. And as I also shared, we're gonna do 
pool and stuff over there. Here's some more deck boxes going on. Concrete wise, because I know you just want to see concrete. There you go. Was just good old sidewalk like concrete. Now it is gray. We'll just walk all the way around. Gonna put down um, more of that like landscaping cover stuff and get more mulch done. Okay, you all riddle me this. Last year, I had some people come and weed my gardens, um, like just heavy, clean it out, put down mulch, do a whole lot. It was a time when I could not, just our family in general, we had so many things going on, you know how those times go, and I just had landscapers come and pull this front garden area together. During conversation then, I heard from someone that putting down the landscaping barrier doesn't really help. But then I'm up here in these front gardens and there's some places where this barrier must be 10 years old or so, and there's still just mulch on it. Nothing's growing through, it's still working. So I'm thinking I wanna do the barrier all over again, where it has broke through is when I moved in and when I, causing trouble, I just caused trouble and everything, where I dug holes through it to plant my bulbs and such. I just wanna know in your gardens, if you've put down barrier, you know that you guys help me with this stuff all the time. Do you put down barriers? And then do you put mulch on top of it? And does that seem to work well for you? I have areas where I have ground cover and such growing through, so I just don't want that to go through. But then there's definitely areas where I've broken the barrier and now, you know, grass and stuff's growing. I don't want that. Okay, so it was just all kinds of funky concrete and now it is all one happy color. Torch lilies are coming up. Dogs are a barking. I hear ya. There's some of the old barrier. We've got this wonderful ivy stuff. It smells like lemon. And uh, anyway, you see, I painted. And. Glory hallelujah. This hostess, it is so exciting. It grows wild in our forest. I know, it's amazing. So the Lord just knew that was a desire of my heart. So I dig it up all the time and I plant it everywhere I would want it. So I'm gonna put some more hostess in here too. Here we got evidence of kids living here. <laughs> they were running quick to get to dance, but I got the trim painted around that door. And then here is my wicker chair that got painted and rained on, but it still worked out. Now you get your full on country porch chat. Those of you who've been saying, Jimmero, we want, we miss country porch chats. Well, here you go. You're getting a big old country porch chat. You watch me sweat through all of that fixing up in this past weekend. <sighs> My dogs. So here's the thing, unless I'm holding them, they're going to bark at me. <laughs> and I wanna sit outside so I can talk through it. Can you listen through it? We shall see. I was gonna tell you a tale of how I almost very recently moved us to Texas. We moved here 2016. We had some big plans when we moved here. Things didn't go as planned, mainly because I've told this story more um, and I will try to link it down below. What did I even call that video? I think uh, stuff you don't know about me or something. It was just a chatty video. And it was just sharing the, the drama that we endured um, when we moved in unexpectedly from these things called neighbors that we weren't used to. And when we bought almost 13 acres in the wilderness um, in an area where everyone else has their own 10 to 40 acres, we didn't think we'd be running into neighbor issues. But we learned different the week we moved in. And again, I won't get into all that here, and I really don't even wanna like hash through it in all the comments and stuff, cause it is exhausting. Just know uh, whether their fault, our fault, doesn't matter. We had some neighbor stuff going down that started the first week when we moved in. So whatever has been happening <laughs> is what has paused our overall plan in general. A lot of you ask like why we don't have a living room and such. And so whenever we bought this house and longtime viewers, you can tell the story, my plan was 
to turn this big garage into a living room. That happens, people do that. And then have built on a, f a full laundry room, pantry, and mud room. That was the plan and all that screeched to a halt um, because we didn't know within a short little time we were gonna have to turn around, put this place on the market, and move again. We don't want to though, and it has been three years. It's been three years in March. Um, you know, kids are kids are growing. Everything is fast, quick, and in a hurry, right? And everybody's growing fast, quick, and in a hurry. Jaden and Zion, a lot of their childhood was at the farmhouse, but from Naomi on down, um, they're really ingrained here at this wilderness home, um, you know, as they have memories of the farmhouse. Even Daniel sometimes will talk about back at the old house, but he was 16 months when we moved here. He doesn't know. He doesn't remember anything there, really. Uh, so he's just mimicking his brothers and sisters. So everyone is used to, you know, playing here in the forest and at the bridges and going to the lake and walking up and down our road and hiking. And, you know, this is home for them. So that being said, over the last year or so, Travis and I have been looking at anything that would meet our requirements on the market. And what we would want where we live in Virginia seems like a real needle in a haystack. You know, we're not too terribly far outside of the Northern Virginia, Washington DC area. Although we're rural, we don't have a stoplight. There's a Walmart now with Walmart grocery pickup 25 minutes away. All my big cities that I frequent are 45 minutes to an hour though, uh, where we go to church and all of that. So if we were gonna move again, what we would want is a house at least 3,000 square feet. We have three bathrooms now. If we could get a fourth bath, that would be nice at least 10 acres. And then a wish list bonus item we would want would be a big separate garage for Travis. And we would want all of that for under 400,000. By the time we get to that 400,000 mark, we're in the zone where we could buy land and build exactly what we want. So it's been hard to find. <laughs> there was one house that we found and it was on 17 acres and it had like a big 1200 square foot separate shop beautiful feel, you know, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous. So with that house, while we were preparing our offer, it already went under contract. It's hard to find the house that would make it worth, and there's a woodpecker, the house that would make it worth it for us to move that also has the land that we would want and potentially the garage. All that to say, for the last year or so, we've just been exploring all our options and even the option of getting land and building. If we could just stay where we are and build here, that would be lovely. That being said, now we're gonna talk about Texas. I don't know how I even stumbled upon it. I have since deleted Zillow from my phone. So earlier this spring, somehow, I got looking into like Northeast Texas. And what was funny when I was looking at Northeast Texas was the fact that I mentioned it to Travis and he was like, oh yeah, well, I guess we could look in Texas. And I mean, you know, Travis is Travis. He doesn't necessarily want to move other places. And the fact that he was interested in Northeast Texas made it all the more interesting. And I'm telling you, I have, if you're looking for real estate in Northeast Texas, there's a lot of real estate in Northeast Texas. I mean, I, I just like thoroughly for several months, I was researching it and I had at least 50 properties um, that were very interesting. We're talking, they hit all the parameters. 3,000 to 4,000 square feet, 10 to 20 acres, in-ground pool. Several of them had separate shops. I mean, Texas was looking mighty fine to us, okay? Um, and I do wanna say my disclaimer, I have a lot of friends in Texas and a lot of friends in Northeast Texas and several of my good girlfriends who live there, who live around like the Tyler area, they, they were helping me with my research and so thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me. I think ultimately for all these funny things I'm about to say, we will get to it, all these funny things I'm about to say, um, I know that where the Lord puts you, you know that's home. And if you're in the mountains of Virginia or if you're in Tyler, Texas, it's all home. Okay, so I, though, during this time, I've been praying because I'm the queen of, of 
bad and wrong ideas, okay? So I was praying, Lord, this Texas thing is getting more and more interesting. Um, you know, stop me, stop me, Lord. <laughs> so research in Texas, and I got through, like I mentally had worked through scorpions. I mentally had worked through, uh, there's a potential of East Texas alligators. You can Google that. Um, I, you know, of course the various snakes and the bugs and such, like I, I had worked through that because we would be getting, oh, I didn't mention all of these houses that I kept seeing. I mean, we're talking 350 max. There's this one house. I'm telling you, 4,000 square feet, 20 acres, basketball court, and it's like 349. And it's gor it's gorge, as Amelia would say. It's just gorgeous and shiny. So, like, all of my house hunter dreams were coming true in my heart in Texas. And so, it had gone as far to where Travis and I, because our 21st anniversary is this July, and we had lined it up with my mom. Grandmother was going to come. She was going to come stay with the kids for, like, two weeks. And for Travis and I's 21st anniversary trip, we were road tripping to Texas. We were gonna go, at one point it was July, another point it was June, depending on grandmother's dates there. Uh, so we were going, and we were gonna go when it was hot so we could really experience it. We had a real estate agent lined up we were working with. This one house I saw several times, I was making my list and it had this beautiful pantry and the pantry was the size of my kitchen now. And I was like, hearts coming out of my eyes, loving the pantry. But there was one thing I couldn't figure out. I don't know, this ladder thing. And it went down, you would go down the ladder and you would be in this room made out of cinder blocks. And they had shelves down there and some chairs, it looked like some water. And I just was like, I kept going back to that room. What is that? Why, why would you have a room like that? What, what is that for? All this research and planning and it's a storm shelter. Now, please know I have lived, I will be 40 in August. Okay. I've lived my whole life in Virginia. I've lived on more of the Eastern shore side near the beaches. We did have some hurricanes down there, um, but mostly, uh, you know, mountains of Virginia kind of girl. And I know the mountains protects us from different weather. I know one time, maybe eight to 10 years ago, we had one tornado that came through and I even heard it in the middle of the night go over the house. Okay, so I have experienced that, but I have not grown up or lived any of my life in an area that deals with those kind of storms regularly. I have friends who live in areas that have tornadoes. I know tornadoes are a thing. Um, I know we all deal with stuff. Okay, okay, yet again, get this out, woman. <laughs> so anyway, I realized all these houses that I loved were either in Tornado Alley or like right around it. I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I just don't. I don't wanna add the possibility of multiple tornadoes a year and like storm cellar safety. And again, I've heard from so many people who live in this area. So like, I'm not trying to diss your home place. We all have different things we're used to. I just thought like, to me, it's part of my internal comedy routine that sure, J. Morrell, you find great deals on houses. They're in Tornado Alley. So after working through all the Texas research, we have decided this is where we are. We had a plan when we moved here. I think we're gonna try to move forward with that plan. All the things that you watched us sweat and do this weekend were things that we wanted to get done even whenever we thought Texas might be a good possibility for us. Talked about it again and decide, no, we're, we're trying to stay. We're gonna try to stay now after this has been some good exercise. We said, well, we should uh, dive in now and start getting things done here. We've been in that holding pattern. So now we're kind of letting loose. So Travis is just having the time of his life clearing that backyard. Something else, okay, country port chat's just a rolling. Now we're gonna talk about chickens. You ready, you ready, okay. One of you mentioned how growing up, you had a guard duck and the duck guarded your chicken flock. So then I was Googling about having guard ducks with the chickens. And then I stumbled upon an article on Hobby Farms on their website about having a guard goose. And it was saying that 
um, having a goose that they're of course noise makers and they're obnoxious I you know we you've heard the woodpecker earlier it sounds like we have monkeys in the trees sometimes it's just wild noises around here so I think I like that idea of having a guard goose and it's supposed to what I read is you just get one and they bond to the flock of hens if I would get more than one goose it would bond with the other goose and then we would have geese that would uh, bond together and not protect the hens but if I have one it's supposed to be a noisemaker supposed to protect the flock I'm very interested in this whenever I look to order I saw they wouldn't just ship me one gosling. I would have to either order a few goslings. It was like I had to order three or four or I had to order some more hens. So you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna order the goose <laughs> and I think I'm gonna order a few more hens because what's a few more? But let me know in the comments below also if you have a guard goose, if you've ever heard of such a thing. I just think it'd be fun to have another little farm animal. I think it'd be fun noise. I think by everything I've read, it's been good protection. And so the, the dogs keep the big predators away, how they always have, and then the goose. They're supposed to be good like for possums and raccoons and basically just anything that would try to get in the chicken yard or try to get in the chicken coop. And also, don't worry about Travis because him and I are still going to take a big 21st anniversary trip later this summer we will be going for seven to ten days for our 21st anniversary trip um yeah it'll be good we're gonna go somewhere i don't know where though because texas is now not where we are going <laughs> we'll be going somewhere it'll be fun it'll be a mom and dad trip it's gonna be our first trip in almost two decades without having a baby with us or a nursing baby or a little one because benjamin will be two in july i will finally let you go Thank you so much for watching this. Let me know down in the comments below what you would like to see more of around here. And I will chat it up in the comments and see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye bye.